from Daily Trust News Center. This is the News Hour. Tonight on News Hour. Reactions trail emergence of two sons of Chief Justice in Bochi primaries. Murder Nasarawa State National Population Commission Commissioner's Children Regain Freedom. Suspended Accountant General released from EFCC custody. Away from Nigeria, Yemen warring sites extend truce for two months. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. Trust News R, I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for joining. Now, Borno State PDP governorship candidate Muhammad Ali Jajari has vowed to end the one-party system in the state if elected. The party flag bearer said PDP is ready to challenge and unseat the incumbent governor Omar Azulum in next year's election. He said he will focus on insecurity, power and nepotism in the state if given the chance. Jajari, who debunked claims that PDP is involved in anti-party activities with the ruling party, described such insinuations as mere sentiments meant to sabotage PDP's existing chance of winning the 2023 polls. He still threatening a lot of things. Secondly, to make sure all the SAT employees, government public employees, returned back to their service. And the third one is that there should be contracts, awards done by reputable companies, not family business. Well, they're using the term um, direct labor, but everybody knows it's not direct labor is contract given to cronies, family members, and associates. And that's why most of the contracts that are done are expired within a short period of time. There are so many ways to generate power. I really do not see anything he's doing that is so impressive. Nothing. Anybody, you can do it. Anybody can do it. Many, uh, sentiment in respect to how uh, the ruling party have uh, so many moles in our party that work for them. But with this development, you have one party, PDP, our house now is in order, and we are preparing to take over. Uh, power from APC from 2023. They have been using the IDPs for, for uh, elections, to win elections. Now they do serve the one who returns those IDPs back. So from all indications, we are taking over. Plus this uh, newly uh, elected electoral act. We are very hopeful. All those monkey business in election process will no longer be there. Win, win election. Everyone is is having enough with the APC. Politics in the country has been reduced to a game for the highest bidder, where only the corrupt thrive while Nigerians wallow in abject poverty. A former Kwara APC governorship aspirant, Alhaji Yakub Gobir, stated this shortly after the camping to the Young Progressive Party in Ilori. According to him, the obscene monetization of the electoral process is part of a grand design to scheme out the upright and competent from participating in the governance of the country. On his reasons for seeking YPP's governorship ticket, Gobiru said he has since resolved to deploy his resources to prepare the youthful segment of the society to keep to effect change through his party. 2019 elections that ushered in the current APC government at both the state and federal levels. Yet, I must confess, I have become disillusioned with Nigeria's leadership selection process. Our democracy is an expensive and inefficient exercise 
which has been hijacked by money bags in an illegitimate process that cannot produce a legitimate outcome. It is a need to be on the right side of history that explains my decision to leave the All Progressives Congress and to deploy all my resources and God-given talents to build a platform for young men and women to express themselves, to vote, and to be voted for, and more importantly, to take charge of their own destiny. That platform is the Young Progressive Party. Mixed reactions have continued to greet the emergence of the two sons of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Muhammad Tanku, as candidates for Bauchi North on the platforms of the All Progressive Congress and the People's Democratic Party. Adamu Imam takes a look at the divergent views of Bauchi residents on how the two candidates emerged as their party's flag bearers. Political parties have conducted their primary elections for the State House of Assembly National Assembly as well as governorship seat across the 20 local government areas of the state. Although the election have come and gone, what has refused to go with the election is how the two sons of the chief judge of Nigeria, Muhammad Tanko, who won both in the All Progressives Congress APC and People's Democratic Party PDP respectively. Ibrahim Muhammad Tanko, who is the elder brother, won the senatorial seat of both North Senatorial Zone under the platform of APC with 179 votes, defeating the incumbent Senator Blukachua, who scored zero vote. While the junior brother, Sani Muhammad Tanko, won the House of Representative ticket for Gyad Ishara Federal Constituency by defeating other contestants to also emerge winner under the platform of the People's Democratic Party. However, based on the outcome of the primaries, many people, especially supporters of both parties, of the view that the victory of the two sons was as a result of their father's influence, despite not being a politician himself. I cannot say that they bought it because of the influence of their father. They bought it because of their good behaviors because of those people. As I know, uh, if, there, if there is any problem with them, they cannot vote them at the same house like that. Corroborating this position is Adamu Muhammad Jahun says credibility and the need to deliver effective representation led to the outcomes of the primaries. Senator Bulukachua is nowhere to be found. Since he was elected, he taught delegates or party stalwarts alike before that you could swear with money, not anymore. The narrative has changed. I think the outcome of the election is a lesson to all participants that they should deliver democratic dividends to the peoples they represent or get kicked out. Haji Arabi, a woman leader, dispels rumors that financial inducement determined the outcomes of the polls elections. They are the kind of people we need in our constituency and especially in Bauchi State. For us, financial inducement during elections no longer holds sway because our electorates are wiser now. My opinion is that they have the right to aspire to whatever height they want. After all, the incumbents have nothing to offer the electorates. Their personality and their degree of human relation with people or their community uh, is what I, what I can refer to as the contributing factor of their success. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. Chief Press Secretary to the Governor of Delta State, Olisa Ifejika, says Governor Ifai Okoa of Delta State is capable of occupying the seat of President of Nigeria with his performance and contributions to national politics. The Chief Press Secretary stated this in response to remarks by an analyst on a TV program, referring to Governor Okoa as unfit to be considered as PDP's vice presidential candidate, addressing journalists at the Government House Asaba. The CPS said Governor Okoa has the requisite experience to not only be the vice president, but president, as he has demonstrated in different capacities. Fedika berated the analyst for spreading falsehood about the development of Delta State under the leadership of Governor 
ifanyokuwa should have in politics senator dr ivan yokoa has it to even the, to even be the president of this country but for somebody to think that he is not qualified to be the vice president of this country because of not being a national person of course we know that that is malicious that comment was very very malicious osi banjo who is now vice president the best he has in politics was commissioner for Joseph Attorney General of Lagos State, Okowa, for all intents and purposes, was a commissioner in Delta State for eight years. He became Secretary of State Government for four years before becoming a senator. Before now, not much was done, particularly in the coastal area, the riverside, where people are really going through tough times. But an Okowa, braved it, went into the interior of the riverside and constructed roads. It's on record that we have 20.8 kilometers of road inside the water. Two daughters of the recently murdered former commissioner of the National Population Commission, Zakari Omaru Kibu, have regained freedom from their captors. Gunmen had on Sunday stormed Omar Kibu's residence in Azuba Bashai, Lafia local government area of Nasarawa State, and abducted his children after killing him. The Nasarawa State Police Public Relations Officer, ASP Rahan, Ramhan Damsel, Nansel, Wednesday confirmed their release. He said that the children were rescued due to the pressure mounted on the kidnappers who were hiding in the mountains in a local government area of the state. He said the victims had been reunited with their family after undergoing medical examination. When asked whether ransom was paid to secure their release, the PPRO said that the command had no knowledge of such. However, a family source said that the 30 million naira ransom was paid to the kidnappers before the children were released. Suspended Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, has been released by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The EFCC spokesperson, Wilson Ujare, who confirmed this on Thursday, said Idris was released on bail from the custody of the anti graft agency on Wednesday night in Abuja and has since been reunited with his family. Idris was arrested by the operatives of the EFCC on May 16, 2022, over alleged 80 billion naira fraud. Still staying with judiciary, the Federal High Court in Abuja has scheduled the hearing of the extradition proceedings initiated against the suspended Assistant Commissioner of Police, Abakari, by the federal government for Friday. Justice Inyang Eko chose the date on Thursday to enable the Attorney General of the Federation to file a formal response to Kerry's notice of primary objection challenging the competence of the extradition application filed by the AGF. The AGF applied to the court for permission to surrender Kerry to authorities of the United States in relation to his alleged link with international fraud suspect Abbas Ramon, a.k.a. Hush Puppy. Now, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has closed its case against a former governor of Plateau State, Jonah David Jang, and a former cashier in the office of the Secretary to the State Government, Yusuf Pam. The case, which is before Justice C.L. Dabup of the Plateau State High Court, sitting in Jaws, was closed after the commission presented 14 witnesses and tendered several exhibits. Jiang and Pam are facing trial for alleged criminal breach of trust and misappropriation of Plateau State funds to the tune of 6.3 billion naira. After the prosecution closed its case, the defendants were expected to open their defense on Wednesday. However, their legal team led by Mike Ezehome, SAN, informed the court of their decision not to do so. Rather, Ezehome is inviting the prosecution has to uh, address the court within 14 days and hopes to reply in 10 days while the prosecution has another five days to reply on point of law. Thereafter, the judge adjourned the matter to the 1st of July for adoption of final written addresses. 
A federal high court in Abuja has ordered the interim for feature of assets linked to a former director of finance and accounts in the Federal Ministry of Health, Anthony Hassan. Justice Zainab Abubakar gave the order while ruling on a motion expertly brought by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The judge also directed that the interim for feature order be published in national dailies for anyone with interest in the properties to show course within 14 days why it should not be forfeited to the federal government of Nigeria. The university belt by Anthony Hassan was suspected to have been belt with proceeds of unlawful activities traced to its owner. The physical assets of the university forfeited included Senate Building, ICT Building, Faculty of Medicine Building, Science Deanery Building, two academic buildings, a faculty hall and other buildings. Other assets forfeited were Gasman Water Factory, Gasman Event Center, and Gasman International Hotel in Kaduna. Again, the Federal High Court in Abuja Division has struck out the application filed by the Premier Academy, Lube, seeking to stop the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission from investigating the circumstances which led to the alleged rape and death of one of its students, Karen Hapuk Oandodo. Instead, the court ordered an accelerated hearing of the substantive suit, fixing it for 22nd of June, which is the same day Karen Hapuk died one year ago. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission had asked the school for explanation after it received a formal complaint from Karen's mother, Vivian Vihimga uh, Apaga, accusing the institution of breaching its side of a contract to care for and protect her daughter. Premier Academy Lube had in response asked the court to grant it an interlocutory injunction restraining the FCCPC from inviting, summoning or causing its staff or representatives from attending any public hearing pending the hearing and determination of the substantive suit on the matter. Presiding Judge Justice Evelyn Maha, however, ruled that granting the application will impact on the legality or illegality of the actions of the FCCPC, which is a major issue to be determined in the substantive suit. She therefore struck out the application and ordered an accelerated hearing of the substantive matter. Now, with over 1.6 million students participating in the ongoing West African Examination Council WAEC examination across the nation, their counterparts in Sokoto and Zamfara are for the second year running unable to participate. This is due to insecurity and other administrative bottlenecks in the sector. Salis Lawan visited some of the examination centers in Yola, Adama, where students who are writing the examination are calling for government intervention to boost education in the region. The report. With the recent insecurity in the Northwest, Northeast, and some parts of Nigeria, education in these areas has been negatively impacted. This negative impact has not only presented a bleak future for the region, but also affected the number of intakes in the Nigerian school system. For instance, the number of over 1.6 million students in Nigeria who are currently writing WAEG could have been higher if Sokoto and Zamfara were able to participate in the exercise. This non-participation has been attributed to lack of finances and insecurity. In Adamawa, Trust TV visited some examination centers where students were participating in the ongoing exercise. Some of them expressed hope of furthering their studies if given the needed support. I'm writing my exam in Capital School. I'm so far so good. My exam is going smoothly and successfully. I'm, I'm hoping by, by finishing my exam, I'm studying in a particular university. I'm from Capital Day, Government Secondary School. I'm writing my work. I hope so. When I finish, I want to study mass communication by God's grace. I'm a student of Capital School. 
Uh, we thank God for the exam that is going on. We thank God for being with us since through chess. SS1 to this up to this time, we thank God. Thank God for our government for providing us with free education. Uh, we thank God that we are about to finish our exam. We are very happy. To ensure the advancement of education in the region, stakeholders say proactive measures need to be taken by the appropriate authorities. The Waeka examination that is going on right now in Adama State uh, is perfect because uh, before the commencement and uh, while they have uh, started, I went out. My directors too went out and uh, everything is on ground because especially like uh, the sciences, they have uh, all equipment on ground and uh, we have teachers alhamdulillah and uh, all students were seen in their classrooms or in their uh, halls writing the examination it's perfect there is no problem for two years running sokoto and zamfara state have not participated in the exercise due to challenges which many believe need to address sooner than later Statistics shows that out of the 1,607,985 registered for the examination, 800,055 representing 49.76% are males, while 800,724 representing 50.24% are females. From Yola, Silas Lewin, Trust TV News. In a related development, a total of 19,385 candidates in Gombe State are taking part in the West African Senior School Certificate Examination in 112 public and private schools. This comes after the state government paid the exam fees for the students of public secondary schools. Ibrahim Ismail reports. These are students of Government Science Secondary School, GSSS Gombe sitting for the 2022 june july west african senior school certificate examination the school registered 401 students from the total of 19,385 candidates sponsored by the inwahia led administration some visibly elated students say they were prepared for the examination in terms of our performance, I want to tell the governor that we are trying in this school and we are reading and our teachers are highly qualified teachers who spend their time to, te to teach us and also to study before you come to the classroom. So, I read, I read very hard, so, so hard that because I want to pass my exam. And I even spend the whole night reading because I want to study this exam. However, Sokoto and Zamfara State's candidates were not registered for WAEG due to the inability of the state governments to settle outstanding debts. Parents in Gombe are grateful to the state government for ensuring that their children are not left out. I won't be able to pay for my child's exam fee. Without government assistance, he could have been a school dropout. It's difficult to take the responsibilities of his siblings at home and catering for the family. An educationist called on other governments in the region to emulate Gombe State and give priority to basic education by sponsoring students to take part in relevant examinations. The student may think of spending all these two years and at last in a sort of him or her to get a certificate that can help them to go to the high institution, but they are not being opportune. That may provoke them to start t negative thinking. Gombe State government said it is optimistic. The performance of students in WAEG will continue to witness tremendous improvement. That Gombe State, in terms of external examination, we recorded 79.5 percent out of a total of 15,000 uh, students that sat for WAS. We recorded 79.5% of those of students that passed WAEG examination with five credits 
including English and math. Minimum. 1,607,985 candidates in 20,221 secondary schools nationwide are writing the May-June 2022 West African Senior School Certificate Examination from Gombe. Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. You're watching the news hour uh, on Trust Television coming up shortly. Caring for the elderly. Details and more after the break. Join us again. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. Thanks for staying. This is the News Hour on Trust Television. Here is a reminder of our top stories again. Reactions trail emergence of two sons of Chief Justice in Bochi primaries. Murdered Nasarawa State National Population Commission Commissioner's children regained freedom. In other news, the civil society organizations in River State have appealed to the state government to pay teachers of the state-owned schools who are being owed six years' salaries. The chairman of the state civil society organizations, an FR judge, who said this, who said this during a press briefing in Port Harcourt, urged the state governor, Yesamwike, to withdraw the appeal court case and pay the school's teachers their salaries. The chairman explained that some of the teachers have died while some are critically ill due to non-payment of their salaries. He also called on the government to pay the gratuity of pensioners who have been pleading for their benefits over the years. Three key issues. One is that we want to plead that uh, Excellency the Governor of River State should please uh, withdraw the court case against the demonstration teachers at the Court of Appeal and uh, reinstate and pay these teachers their six years' salary. These teachers are dying, they are suffering as I speak to you. Uh, just only recently we have recorded more deaths. The issue of the pensioners. They are saying that the Excellency should do well to pay our old parents their pension and gratuity. Uh, the government had promised that uh, in May they are going to pay. And uh, from calls we have put through to these, our old parents who have served uh, states judiciously, uh, up to now there is no signal yet. But we believe that the governor who have just less than one year to go will not allow us to go to that part. As the strike embarked upon by the Academic Staff Union of Universities ASU continues, university students remain stuck at home 
Ironically, despite the absence of students, the Umar Musa Yaradua University Katsina has been granted approval by the National Universities Commission to run some special education programs. The Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Sanusi Maman, dropped the hint while addressing journalists in his office. Abdullahi Hamadi has more. With these approvals, Umar Musa Eradwa University can now admit students with special needs to study at the Department of Special Education. The Special Education Department was introduced to admit students from the School for the Blind Kazana and the School for the Deaf in Malumfaishi. This is in addition to others graduating from polytechnic and other colleges of education. Yeah, here in Katana, when they could graduate, not many, no, not many universities are ready to accept them to come and uh, pursue a higher degree. So they are ready, they can come now, uh, school for the blind. You end up seeing them in the filling station baking. When they ought to have been sponsored by somebody to come and pursue their degrees there. So we have now a place and all the equipment required to train these individuals, they are there. The Vice Chancellor also spoke extensively on the long awaited conversion of Federal Medical Center Katana to a teaching hospital for students studying medicine at the university. For those who are wishing to help their children to read medicine, they should get them prepared and get extra lessons for them to come to teach them to be able to earn 200 and above in subsequent jam examination. Similarly, to restore the lost glory of agriculture in Kazana State, Umar Musa Radwa University has established Faculty of Agriculture at Lion Minister in Malumfashi local government area to encourage research and to development. The international relations is, is a social science course. If we can help people to read this area, it will help a lot. In subsequent years, a lot of things will be done. But I want to assure the world that all the required equipment, facilities are made available in the university for people to, for, to excel in those areas. So, so far, we have approval to commence 14 programs. We are waiting for the NUC resource verification to approve another nine new programs, including PhD in biology, educational psychology, curriculum, and other related subjects. Beyond the approvals by the NUC, these programs could only be achieved with funding, provision of equipment and enough infrastructure at the university. So we introduced and got approval from the NUC to commence bachelor's degree in integrated science, business administration, uh, business education, primary education, early childhood education, as well as Department of Special Education, which was established and constructed. Observers say Nigeria's development will remain at a snail speed unless stringent measures are taken to discourage strike action at all levels of education. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Crossed Television News, Katana. Two million children from zero to nine months are expected to be vaccinated against polio in the 14 local government areas of Zamfara State. The Executive Secretary, Zamfara State Primary Health Care Board, Dr. Tukuru Ismail, disclosed this during the official flag off of polio outbreak response using the novel oral polio vaccine at Moriki Emirate in Zurmi local government area of the state. The report. The Zamfara state government says it's not leaving anything to chance in the fight against polio in the state. The government says this necessitated the official flag off of the polio outbreak response campaign targeting 2 million children from 0 to 9 months for vaccination against the disease in the state. According to the Executive Secretary Zamfara State Primary Healthcare Board, Dr. Tukur Ismail, the vaccination is in response to the resurgence of polio virus in Malawi, despite not being in Nigeria. <laughs> I'm 
world is now in the global village and we decided to strengthen the early capital association. And this is a plan for the stakeholders, the additional leaders, and the leaders to put the commencement of the one and the uh, 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 response using the Bell World Trojo vaccine. And uh, uh, as you have seen, it's uh, going to be a big time to go around the entire Emirates Council to provide the answers together with the speech and the local government the State Commissioner for Health, Aliu Abubakar, represented by the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, urged residents of the state to cooperate and ensure that children receive the novel oral polio vaccination. Chairman Zamfara State Council of Chiefs and Emir of Anka at Tahir Ahmed, who was represented by the Emir of Moriki, Bashar Ismail, at the event, assured of the traditional ruler's support at ensuring parents allow their children aged 0 to 9 months to receive the novel oral polio vaccination. The Executive Secretary of the Zamfara State Primary Healthcare Board, Dr. Tukur Ismail, Permanent Secretary, State Ministry of Health, and the Emir of Moriki took time out to supervise and ensure quality implementation of the polio outbreak response within the Emirate. Residents of Oshun State have identified lack of sophisticated equipment and poor crowd control strategies as major impediments to quick and effective firefighting. As a result, the firemen are often at the receiving end, incurring the wrath of angry mobs wherever fire wrecks havoc. Hamid Oegbadi files in this report as presented from our studios. The main duty of firemen is to extinguish fires whenever they occur. Apart from combating and fighting fires, other functions of firemen include rescuing people from road traffic accidents and dealing with other emergencies such as flood. There have been instances of mob attacks on firemen while carrying out their duties. This could be as a result of slow response to fire outbreaks. Properties worth 47 billion naira were saved in Ocean State last year, courtesy of the efforts of men of Ocean State Fire Service, while properties worth over 1 billion naira were lost to fire incidents in the state. An unfortunate fire incident at Oke Popo in Oshobo, Oshun State Capital, consumed properties worth millions of naira. Nothing could be salvaged as the fire raised many shops. Madam Bintu, who witnessed the incident, said, Men of the Oshun State Fire Service came to the scene immediately they were called, but had to return to get water. We hear shouting that Wuta Wuta, we don't know about Wuta Wuta, or that wrong, everybody come out. When they come out, they said at the Ade is fire, fire, all sub, all sub. Ah. They, cry, they call uh, uh, fire, fire. fire, fire. They come. But before they come, anything to spoil. Shegun Adeguki decried the attitudes of people who resort to take pictures and recording videos during the fire incidents. Nothing, such actions can constitute hindrance to firemen. When firemen are called upon to come and put out the fire, these days you find that uh, they are obstructed by people who are trying to record the scene or trying to record the incident. They want to be the first to break the news. And so uh, the, uh, the actual work that the firemen were actually called upon to come and do, they will not be able to do it. The director of Ocean State Fire Service, Mr. Michael Ogundepe, urged residents to call the fire service immediately a fire outbreak occurs and assure that firemen are always ready to do their job. The challenges we are having is the public. When the fire is burning, they will not call the fire service immediately they notice there is fire. The public will be making their own effort to put the fire off by themselves. But when it gets beyond the control, it is then they will remember that there's fire surface. When they call the fire surface, the fire surface will follow them immediately. When, they, when we get there, the whole building might, might be engulfed by fire, and the public will now blame the fire surface that since the fire has been burning for so, so 
more than one hour ago, fire service is just coming. But immediately they call us, we follow them to the scene of fire. The federal government says it is in the final stage of establishing aging desks in the 32 MDAs to accelerate and effectively include older persons in strategic plans, programs, activities, budget lines, as well as monitoring and evaluation frameworks of MDAs. Director General of the National Senior Citizens Center, M.M. Omokaru, disclosed this at a workshop for desk officers from 32 MDAs as well as officers from the House Committees on Disabilities and that of Women and Social Development. The, pro the report. Organized by the National Senior Citizen Center in collaboration with the United Nations Population Fund, the workshop focused on planning and implementation aspects of MDA's mandates in relation to aging policy in Nigeria. The Director General of the Center, NMO Mokaru, informs that this training is among other things to enhance knowledge of population aging, stem stereotypes and institutional discrimination against older people and to enhance appreciation of the rights of older persons to inclusion in the development agenda. With the establishment of the National Senior Citizen Center, as a focal agency of aging and older persons, is a coordinating, initiating, collaborating, um, and lobbying, I would say, agency. So now it is our place to do what we are doing here today, to partner with MDAs and then to ensure that all the MDAs who host these statutory mandates that intersect with our mandate really understand the issues and to work with them to ensure that the issues are defined and can be broken down into programs that are age appropriate for older persons. Country Director of UNFPA, Ula Elizabeth Muella, whose message was delivered by Talsin Ojogun, reaffirmed the Ford's commitment to assist Nigeria address the challenges facing older citizens, especially as the aging population continues to grow faster than the general population. We thank the government of Nigeria for recognizing this and committing to addressing the issues and concerns of older persons in Nigeria. I want to emphasize UNAPS commitment and participation in ensuring old people's continued inclusion in society, as well as in the development and implementation of policies that directly influence their well-being integrated into the society. Statistician General of the Federation and Chief Executive of the National Bureau of Statistics, Samuel Adeniron, represented by the Director, Social and General Services, Tunde Adebisi, made a case for timely, statistical and internationally acceptable data on the aging population to ensure that the right policies are implemented for older people. The reliable, timely and up-to-date data is very essential to the formation of good policies that will address the concerns of elderly persons in Nigeria. Consequently, the time is now for all critical stakeholders that are desired user supply of data to brace up in their roles so as to put an end to bodies of the elderly. Special advisor to the President on Humanitarian Affairs, Musa Bongudu, called for both individual and collective efforts from relevant MDAs and partnering organizations to ensure that the challenges facing older people are addressed. Please, may I take this opportunity? And in conclusion, I feel to all of us, let's see what we can do as individuals, what we can do to enhance these services that are reaching them. Government is hopeful that with desk offices and officers and MDAs, issues bothering on aging will be properly mainstreamed into specific programs and services for the benefit of older people. President Muhammad Buhari has lamented the surge in insecurity on African waterways, specifically within the Gulf of Guinea. President Buhari noted that the development required collaborative efforts among stakeholders to tackle. The president spoke at the International Maritime Conference in One, River State, as part of the 66th anniversary of the Nigerian Navy. The report. President Mohamedou Buhari commended the Nigerian Navy for its commitment to ensuring safety of the country's waterways. 
Represented by the Minister of Defense, retired Major General Bashir Magashi, the President noted that efforts of the Nigerian Navy have led to reduction in sea piracy and the listing of Nigeria from the International Maritime Bureau of Piracy List since March 2022. President Buhari said the conference will fashion out ways for collaboration among security agencies and curbing maritime crime in the collective waterways. We we'll agree that these threats have become a transnational and they go beyond the scope and capability of one nation to deal with. The situation therefore calls for greater international collaboration and this conference therefore symbolizes strategic collaborative initiative between the Nigerian Navy and other international monetary stakeholders. Earlier in his remarks, the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Awel Gambo, noted that this year's International Maritime Conference, with the theme Optimizing Collaboration for Maritime Security and Socioeconomic Development in Africa, is apt and timely. Admiral Gambo noted the rising need for effective collaboration in maritime policing, stressing that the current security threat in the Gulf of Guinea is of serious concern to Africa and the global community. This conference will provide a veritable platform to collectively profit well for in addressing the media of challenges in the maritime environment. It is therefore hoped that this forum will facilitate the most needed distance towards identifying viable concepts and constructive collaborative action plans that will support this strategic level initiative. Hence, it is against this backdrop that the team optimizing collaboration for maritime security and social economic development in Africa was conceptualized. Admiral Gambo said the Nigerian Navy has grown from an offshoot of the Nigerian Marines to a formidable component of the country's security architecture and a major player in the Gulf of Guinea security. Meanwhile, President Mohamed Buhari on Thursday in Madrid met with two Spanish companies doing business in Nigeria and assured of a safe, secure and prosperous country. At a meeting with executives of GB Foods, which grows tomatoes in Kebi State the, and employs about 5,000 people, the president pledged that the entire country will be secured, noting that it is one of the cardinal objectives of the administration. Chairman of GB Foods, Arthur Karula, described the company as a family business now in its third generation in Africa with over $250 billion investments in Nigeria, Algeria, Ghana, and Senegal. At another meeting with Notigy, a leading Spanish gas company, the president expressed pleasure that the outfit has established a steady partnership with Nigeria in the oil and gas industry. Chief executive of the Notigy, Francisco Renz, said it is first contact. its first contact with Nigeria was in 1992, noting that since then, they have become one of the largest buyers of liquefied natural gas. You have done for Nigerian communities living abroad by setting up a diaspora commission, and uh, this diaspora commission has been a pivotal in taking care of the needs of Nigerians uh, abroad, which uh, Spain is among them. So here, we have uh, a thriving Nigerian community here. We, the Nigerian community here has been growing every year uh, because of uh, the opportunity that uh, Spain offers to many of us. We have 80,000 documented Nigerians in Spain, and the footballers are very thriving. We have about 19 footballers, uh, Nigerian footballers, and uh, I'm sure, Mr. President, you know about Aziza, who plays for Barcelona. She, 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 she is one, she's one of the leaders in football in this country and it's well appreciated but i hope one day in nigeria that kenneth will be playing for real madrid which is my team i am delighted to be meeting with a cross section of nigerians living in spain many of you are here for different reasons some for a fulfilling career in sports especially in football 
from where you earn respectable incomes to sustain yourselves as well as maintain your extended families in Nigeria, including investments back at home. Now, for more on business, Chiamaka Mwafo has this put together. The Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, says it will commence the process of enforcement and recovery of unremitted tax deductions owed by some state and local governments in the country. This decision was contained in a public notice signed by Executive Chairman Mohamed Nami, where the tax authority noted that most states and local governments have failed to remit to the service withholding tax and value-added tax deductions from payments made to contractors and service providers by them as required by law. Following failure to remit by defaulted states and local governments, the FIRS has stated that it will consequently advise the federal government and the Minister of Finance to henceforth decline approval of any request for the issuance of state bonds or other securities in the capital market. The tax authority stated that it would also publicly name and shame the defaulting states and councils while publishing the amount owed in unremitted tax deductions. Oil prices rose Thursday even as major crude producers agreed to boost output by more than the usual amount following an EU ban on Russian imports. Major oil producers led by Saudi Arabia and Russia began talks Thursday on whether to adjust output hard on the heels of an EU ban on Russian oil imports. Soaring energy prices have fueled growing inflation around the world, hampering economic growth and prompting central banks to hike rates. Finally in stock, the Nigerian stock markets on Thursday extended the bearish sessions as the all share index declined by 0.30% to close at 52,815.78 points. Market capitalization was down by 0.30% to close at 28.474 trillion naira. The aggregate volume and value of trader stocks closed at 274 million units and 4 billion naira in 5,011 deals. Market bread closed negative as 13 stocks gained while 26 stocks declined in their share prices. And that's it for Business News. And away from Nigeria, the United Nations says the truce between the Yemeni government and the country's Houthi rebels has been extended for two months. UN Special Envoy for Yemen, Hans Grunberg, announced that parties to the conflict had agreed to, a, to an extension. In his remark, Norwegian Refugee Council's Yemen country director, Erin Hutchinson, said that the announcement of the truce extension shows a serious commitment from all parties to end the senseless suffering of millions of Yemenis. The initial two-month truce, the first since 2016, began on April 2nd and is set to expire on Thursday. Still from the foreign scene, the United Nations has changed the Republic of Turkey's country name as the organization from Turkey to Turkey, following a request from Ankara for the change. UN spokesman Stephanie Dujaric said that a letter had been received on Wednesday from the Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Kuvusolvulu, addressed to Secretary General Antonio Guterres requesting the use of Turkey instead of Turkey. For all affairs, Turkey began the move to change its internationally recognized official name in English to Turkey in December. The spokesman said that the country name change became effective from the moment the letter was received. Kavusklo uh, announced the letter's official submission to the UN and other international organizations on Tuesday. Now let's take a look at sports updates with Adeni Ajishafe. The 2022 Prudent Energy Handball League first phase has ended at the Velodrome of Ebco Abiola Stadium with defender Babes of Abuja, who led for South 19-8, defeating adorable Angels of Ilorin 40-26. In other results, in the female category, 
Benue Queens walked over Kada Queens. Imo Grasshoppers drew 21 21 against Bender Dynamos. Rima Queens edged out Seaside Babes 32 to 18, while Plateau Peacocks lost to Safety Babes. Defending champion Kano Pillars with 11 games unbeaten, 140 33 against Lagos Seasiders. The defenders are 25 24 to Tall Police Machine. To Jamarine Academy defeated Benue Buffaloes 37 31, while Rima Strikers or Wena Kings ended 36 24. Niger United game against safety shooters ended 23-26 in favor of safety shooters as Nasiru Hassan of safety shooters and Precious Samuel of Rima Queens won most valuable players for male and female of March Day 11 games. Precious Samuel appreciated her teammates for their teamwork while hoping to win more. I could not do this all alone. First, I want to give all appreciations to God Almighty for giving me an opportunity to prove what he has given to me. And secondly, for the support of my teams, my teammates, because I could have not done it on my own. But their help, their prayers and their support brought me so far. President Nigerian Handball Federation Samuel Ocheho expressed joy over the completion of force phase as well as the development of handball in Nigeria. Um, I think I'm more than satisfied. Uh, everything I've seen here is uh, laden with excellence. And uh, I'm lucky this time to have had enough time to really witness what's going on at the league. Uh, at least I've been here for the last eight days. So I've seen loads of talent. Uh, I mean, for me, the happiest thing for me is to see a lot of young talents moving uh, from on the 12 level into the senior level and even winning uh, awards as most valuable players uh, during the event. Uh, a lot of people that played in under 12 in 2018 are already playing at the senior level and that's what I want to see. I want to see people transcend from uh, the younger level to um, senior level. Handball League second phase will kick off in October in Lagos to celebrate 50 years of handball in Nigeria. That's Sport News. I am Adeni Ajishafe. And that wraps up the news hour and Trust Television. Remember, you can watch more by clicking the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and also follow us across all social media platforms. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for watching.